Welcome to the South American Regional Qualifier 2023 in which two South American teams will make it to Seattle. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit, just a few information, not that many details. We're not going to go overboard, but I'm going to give you just a little bit about every single player or team that I know of with public information that has been around and from previous performance that they had at every single team that they participated in during the entire tour. Let's start with Thunder Awaken, the favorite for many. Thunder Awaken team, it's right here. Now, Knight from Belarus, it was brought by Alon. Slatem is the Thunder Awaken mid laner, former Alon, right? Now, this Slatem used to be part of the stack, the Demonios from Balrogs. They took it, their John Talon, 19 years old. Illich, former, formerly known as Little boy, little boy, it is a player that was, at some point he was thinking about retirement, he's back, he's back, and he got called by Ukumari, and then later was poached by Thunder Awaken, and Illich, it's a offlaner that can play you, a monkey king offlaner, yes, in a niche profit offlaner, that's probably one of his specialities, and now that he's in meta, I think it's a mass ban against Thunder Awaken. Solid offlaner, I think it's probably the one that allows the whole space to be created for the entire Thunder Awaken team. Nine, solid uh, position four. Like I have not seen like a really bad performance from him or like a great performance, but I think it's an average, like an average good position four. Without that plenty of experience, uh, former Thunder Awaken with Mino, Zero Style and Frank, plenty of experience during the draft. Now, they used to have Falco as our coach. No longer Falco got ki kicked out. <laughs> That's why, according to Falco, it's like he got kicked out, got removed by uh, majority decision. Four out of the five players decided that Falco uh, shouldn't continue at Thunder Awaken. And now they call Shakalor, Shakadota, former position five of Balrogs. But he also, after their Kazan performance, he's no longer with the Thunder Awaken team. And they have a new coach slash analyst and this coach, uh, Thunder Awaken, is Peruvian. My guess is, he may be a pro player. He may be a new one. Because they had an analyst before. But I think their new coach, probably somebody that likes to dance a lot. I don't know. Maybe he's now, now G, now Gamer. If Thunder Awaken is here, can you please confirm that? Let's go and talk about Infinity. Lumiere, KXY, Vitali, Michael, and Gardi. Former Hokori. Uh, stock infinity acquire their services pretty much they're playing now under the banner of infinity and lumiere it's a solid position one kxy i guess is the new uh, addition now that adlong is not being part of infinity it is kxy the one who is replacing it a lot of blessed rock picks has been popping off on their top ranks vitali i think vitali is the player that's gonna allow infinity perhaps to get another TI participation. Michael, solid position for Gardic as well. A lot of experience, a little bit of an early feat, but that is Infinity. Back it up by Flapjack. In my opinion, I think he is one of the best analysts that we have in the region in terms of Spanish broadcast as well as just being an analyst. Uh, I think it's a huge addition to Infinity now that before Hokori or like the Hokori team didn't have somebody to back them up and give them more ideas to guard it. I think with, with Flapjack, they are on a good track. Akatsuki or Akatsuki. This team is formed by MNC, Kotaro, Leo Style, Farang, Kiri, Prada. Former, yes, I know you may remember this, 016 Thunder Awaken. Yes, that is Kotaro, but... He's one of the top carries right now in the region in terms of rank. You know, top one in America's leaderboard. Uh, Leo Style, you're you're hoping, I mean, if you're an Akatsi, Ak Akatsuki fan, you're hoping that Leo Style will be at his peak like he was at the Singapore uh, Major. Frank, offlaner, now known as Devil. Kitty, position four. A lot of people... Enjoy watching Kitty play. Prada, solid uh, post fight, plenty of experience. He also known as Chessit. He has been in the in the scene for a while, brings a lot of insight. 
perhaps this is a team or like the Peruvian team with the most uh, experience playing qualifiers. Thunder Awaken, remember you by Chompix. Isn't Thunder Awaken the favorite? Aren't they the most experienced? Thunder Awaken is playing with Young Blood. Back it up with the experience from Wudota. Maracatsuki, Minos, Leo Style, Frank, and Prada are bringing the experience. And it's speaking, well, back it up by another experienced coach, Falco Style, who's hungry to take away and make the revenge and take Thunder Awaken slot. I'm going to quote Falco. I will take their slots. I will take Thunder Awaken slots. Those were precisely the words of Falco Style at a podcast, in a podcast. Now, speaking of experience, we move forward into Vivo Kitstart, Costa Billy, Analogy, FCR, King RD, and Kajota, King Jungles. Some people call them dinosaurs. Costa Billy, a former player in the NADPC, returning to Vivo Kid Stars or to this SG Esports that qualify to TI, right? So King RD and King Jungles, they do have the experience of how to play qualifiers, and that's going to be helping them a lot. Analo, he was part of Hokori before. He's now brought back to uh, Brazilian soil. Playing for Vivo Kid Stars, FCR is perhaps the younger player there who was at some point about to quit Dora and just become a coach. But under the guidance of King Jungle, they told him, hey, FCR, you have to be an offlaner. We need an offlaner, and I think you're a good fit for an offlaner. And now we have it there. After, the, after his performance with X5 Gaming, he was signed up by Vivo Kid Stars as their off laner. In terms of their coach and analyst, I'm not sure if D Flash is still their coach or their analyst. This team is kind of working in secret. That secret that they have been training in European servers. Are they boot camping in Europe in secret? Who knows? But for sure, they are all ready to start these South American qualifiers and their potential. One of the favorites to take this slot but favorites for you the brazilian fans but i think there's no favorites at these qualifiers at all matkins adrian or adrian pipi oscar genek red monster well adrian is a uh, solid position one yes matkins got a couple of changes some people are thinking like wait why do you change that uh for adrian you know like Oh, what, what went there? What's, what's going on? PP also left the team. Oscar also was a new addition to Matkins. So they replaced that and they also replaced their off laner Arsene, which, in my opinion, if Matkins were to keep that start, perhaps solid candidate to fight or have a long run. But remember, Red Monster wants to qualify to TI and they believe, based on their whole scrimmage, the performance, and like everything they have been doing, they believe that Adrian and Oscar are the best assets for them to go all the way further. I think the one that makes the whole entire team or the one that moves around is PP. So PP will try to carry this game or will try to carry this team to the TI slot. Red Monster always there with the flex picks. They may, he may even do some type of cheesy picks, cheesy draft, but Red Monster, sometimes he becomes unpredictable and in the drafting style. So this is a good, Good team to watch. Good team to watch for sure. And Oscar with a tie hunter. That is going to be a good game as well. Anytime that Matkins is playing and PP happens to be on fire. Adrian, to me, I think Adrian is sometimes, you know, he's doing amazingly good. And sometimes he's just performing poorly. Um, the Red Monster is looking forward to Adrian to perform extremely good like he did over the past year qualifiers. So that's probably the reason why he called him back. Now, moving forward, Infamous, Mini, Mr. Jeans, Hiko, Jupiter Haynes, Nuages. Now, here, the key maker, the one that led Infamous to Division 1 or no runes to Division 1 was Mr. Jeans. He got replaced. He got replaced by another mid laner, another Brazilian mid laner. 
and he's no longer there, okay? But they, they, they have a... Chopis, who was it? 4DR. Yes, 4DR was the player, the mid laner at Infamous. Now, Mini, position one, great position one. The Monkey King is a mass ban. Mr. Yin plays a lot of spirits, uh, quite versatile, often carrying the team, trying to play this type of position to play heroes that are everywhere, like Ember Spirit, Puck. He could play the Infin uh, Invoker as well. So, hard to catch him. Hiko, solid off laner, I think. Probably one of the top of laners uh, that we have in our region. And Hiko, Downbreaker, Primal Beast are just heroes that you gotta ban. Jupiter Hain, a lion picker. He likes to kill couriers. Noagis, our Brazilian Drake. Trant Protector, that is his signature hero. Mirana, they're gonna be revolving around those type of peaks in which they're gonna try to rotate to the mid lane and trying to put pressure into the enemy's mid laner. Infamous. They're also a solid team, and we hope that they are going to be in an absolutely great mood and they can just roll through these entire qualifiers. Universitario Ispor, Universitario, one of the soccer teams or football uh, teams in South America, in particular Peru, of course. And I am a fan of Universitario, the soccer team, so I do want. Universitario to move as much, as further as they can. They got a new addition of that and the smart. Yes, they replaced their position one and position four after qualifying uh, or after earning that promotion to division one. In my opinion, I think like they should probably just try to keep working on that project as an Universitario fan. I would like them to keep the project with Rena and RDO. RDO was a key maker in that team. Now, without RDO, we're not seeing the smart sort of like making that movement. When Universitario Esports defeated the Thunder Awakeness uh, team, it was with a position four, Demon, the one that was playing the same way that the RDO will be playing. So I think there are some things to work on. Sometimes the itemization on your mid laner, young player, 18 years old, is great, uh, and sometimes his creativity doesn't really revolve around that. But Universitario, that and Reina, Reina is a solid position one as well. I think that brings you the same same features as Reina, and it's just like Dismar, uh, who was one entire tour off or like off season. He tried to qualify with Blockroar Esports. He was off for an entire season, and you are replacing them. RDO for this mar. I don't know whether it was more of a synergy kind of pick. You're looking for someone to be at the boot camp with you. All of the information, only their coach knows that. And who are the coach jump picks? Their coach is Lord Gure Lehman, a former uh, DPC runner or DPC close qualifier participant. he been every single time he has been trying to participate at the SADPC, but great player, and I'm sure he also brings a lot of insight to this Universitario esports team. And pair up with Austin, who I think is their most valuable player right now at Universitario, they may have some chance. All right, there's still more more chance. And as Universitario fan, we want them to succeed, right? So keep an eye on this team. In particular, Austin may be able to just support as much as he can to that, and hopefully that will be able to carry Universitario to their victory. Uh, player to watch out for here, of course, Austin, but their mid laner. If the mid laner managed to be creative enough uh, to build the right itemization, and either on his Invoker, his Ember Spirit, his Bat Rider, and Templar Assassin, any of the spirits as well, he's a really good uh, spirit player, and they may be able to move forward and have a long run at this upcoming qualifier. Balrogs, yes, this team managed to still al be alive after a couple of changes. Some players needed, needed to return. But the addition of Axel instead of Shaka Lord, how does this change? Well, Shaka used to be their drafter, right? And drafter in position five. Now Axel is filling up the same role, but you're bringing Axel, an extremely experienced player. He's like <laughs> very, very, very experienced. And Axel, also known as Affliction, or Chompy, 
So he's good. Great addition for Balrog. DCMC, honestly, DCMC is another sort of like the same level as Adrian. You know, sometimes he could play really good or really bad. So he's very volatile player. Nyango, mid to, mid to good uh, mid laner. I think giving him a Pangolier, stuff like very aggressive, sexy fat on a Mars, that's probably going to be a mass band player on sexy fat. That is a comfort hero. And Demon is just a key maker at Balrogs. But remember that Balrogs defeated Akatsuki, but some people think Akatsuki or Akatsuki is a favorite, it's a favorite team, a potential, right? Great, good contender to make it uh, to Tiaro, Seattle. But I think Axel, in terms of draft, may be able to outperform other teams uh, that are also going to be meeting Balrogs along the way. So Balrogs, they do potentially can surprise us, okay, in terms of draft, play style. You know, they, they're, it is a TI qualifier. There is no chance of like chompies. Well, how about the match fixing that happened at entire uh, second division teams? It is TI qualifiers. I is very, very unlikely that any teams are going to be missing out a chance to qualify to that international in which their whole career can change. Lava Esports, Pike, Lumpy, Arcano, Smoker, Chris, also known as Jimmy Cough 666. Well, let me tell you about this team. To me, I think that this team perhaps is my low budget dream team. Why Chompix? Pike? Solid position, young player, position one, lumpy, young player, I think he's 19 or 20. They are no older than 21 years old. Lumpy, Pike is really young. I think he just graduated high school. At, you know, he's probably 17, if I'm not mistaken. Lumpy, 18, 19. Arcano as well, the same age. A smoker, I have no idea, but Chris is also a young player. Now, Lava Esports, just uh, as we're talking, well, today is Monday. Yesterday, Sunday, they participated in an Alan event. And at Alan event is where you show your talent, you know. That's like there is no betting going around. There is nothing like, you know, oh, they were match fixing or something. Or they're just having fun, having fun. They're playing for their honor. They're playing for their ego. And it was the team. Parker, Alon, Sacred, Valky, and Misa versus Tiburon Singh, Lampi, Arcano, Yadomi, and Chris, who won the best of one grand final at the Mango Arena? It was a team of la well, lava, lava players. And Tiburon Sin showed up the great performance. Now, if you were to pick Tiburon Sin and Pike, I will definitely pick Pike. I think Pike is a better team fighter than Tiburon Sin. So we're just telling you right there that Lumpy, it is the one that opens up the space for Lava Esports and Lumpy aggressive mid laner that's why we like to have this in south america these aggressive mid, mid laners lampy will be moving around arcano just holding his lane making sure that he's taking the towers on time a smoker yes a smoker we probably haven't seen a smoker uh, popping off that much as we would love to but a smoker give him a task peak uh, he revolves around that peak that's the most comfort hero that i have seen him so far and chris can play mostly any healer uh, player and he has been practicing that Chen pick in the IO. Are we going to see Chen and IO in the upcoming qualifiers? I surely guarantee you that we may end up seeing a Chen or an IO pick from Lava Esports. So it is also another team to watch. I think Lava Esports, if they manage to have a flawless performance, they will definitely be like a top six, top four, or perhaps qualify to the international. Noping esports, HFN, plenty of experience, know how to carry the team. No, but Chomp picks HFN only picks the Nature's Prophet. You ban the Nature's Prophet and the Lin and the Luna, then he's gone. I think he also has other players, other heroes under under his belt. And I think he's going to be able to carry Noping to the victory. Sebas, give him comfort hero, Ecuadorian talent, uh, 19 years old, if I'm not mistaken. 19 to 20 years old. Uh, has already played in an international event, has also played uh, qualifier with Infamous Gaming, and I think he has a lot of room to improve even through the entire qualifier. 
giving his comfort heroes Ember Spirit, invo Invoker, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Giving Ember, pretty much Ember. Um, he does play Bad Rider, Seus, Lestrak. So just go around his comfort heroes and making sure that he feels confident and has a clear mind. And I'm sure he will open up the space that HFN needs to farm. Arsen. See, Arsen is probably an underrated offlaner. A lot of people in the scene say like, oh, no, he's really bad enough laner. That's because he doesn't get called by other teams. Perhaps that's probably the reason why they removed him from Matkins. I do trust this player. I think that he's a great off laner, undervalued for sure. Uh, he, does ha he does have a couple of um, heroes under cheesy off laners under his belt. He could play you a Weaver, a n nice talker is on, on meta. But please, please do not give him a downbreaker. Because we have seen his downbreaker. <laughs> or maybe he was just teasing us. No, I still play my downbreaker really bad. No, no. Arsene is a great offlaner. And I believe in him. And I think Nopin may be surprising us. Same as Lava will. El Misho, on a good day, El Misho does amazing gameplays. He's going to be here and there. El Misho resembles Michi. El Misho, like a cat. So he likes to play those type of cheesy, like high movement heroes that he's going to be teasing the enemy team. So El Misho could give us a great performance. Sexy Yogi, good at drafting. Um, his Elder Titan always over there to try to stop any Timbers of Peak and good setups with his Elder Titans, sending the Astral Spirit across the Twin Gate and so on. So yeah, he knows how to play that hero. He can play Dark Willow as well, which is on meta. And I think the team combination of No Ping could perhaps surprise us. Last and not least, Kali. That team from Arequipa has been a little bit silent. Like they have been quietly training. They had participated at other tournaments, other third party tournaments. And Kuka Hook, I think Kuka Hook is one of the carries that knows how to really team fight. He knows how to wait patiently, get into a team fight, and run out of the team fight. So very patient. He calculates every single movement during the team fight. So Good position one. Roboseta, he does have experience playing a qualifiers. He was a runner up uh, two years ago, right? The past two, yeah, two years ago, he was a runner up at the South American regional qualifiers. And he has experience. Kunka player in the mid lane, very versatile, could play you any spirit. So Roboseta, solid mid laner with a lot of experience. Hermi. If I'm not mistaken, this may be his first time playing the qualifiers. Did he play it last year? He probably did play it last year as well, but didn't do, didn't do that well. He's been training a lot. He's an off laner now. He may be leaving to Peru, and I'm sure he moved to Peru just for uh, for the bootcamp. But he did like a tour ago uh, with Lava. Uh, play a lot of uh, controlling heroes like Lycan, most likely. Every every player every every game versus Kali, they're gonna ban his Lycan. What else? Beastmaster, Visage. So those are the heroes that they may end up banning from Hermit. Monty position four, yeah, reg regular position four. You know he he's good, and Luis also another good uh, player at Kali. Um, what can we expect from Kali? Can they go to run? We, I think we can expect. Expect uh, good things from from Hermit. I think like he may try to open up, even though they're just gonna ban a lot of his heroes and just allowing Kuka Hook and Robo Zeta to play their comfort. So it's like, hey, I'm gonna be taking all of the bans most likely. So it's now on you to carry us. And there is a good synergy between Hermit and Monty. So look forward that laning phase. All right, I had covered the entire twelve teams. Who are they going to, like, which teams now, Chompix? Now tell me, your favorites. I really have no favorites uh, to qualify to the upcoming TI, but it is going to be a bloodbath. I guarantee you for that. Like, there's no team. Oh, I cannot say, like, oh, yeah, none of them are going to match fix. You know, like, this has been a hot topic around the second, div uh, the second division, or division two in in Peru or in the entire South American region regarding all of these scandals, these three to two scandals that supposedly 
uh, ESB got the proof and sent it to Valve. And to this day, we have not heard any. Or maybe they're going to surprise us. Hey, tomorrow we finally have our final verdict. We have found these teams or these players from match fixing. I don't know if it's going to happen, but they are not going to miss a chance. They are not going to miss the opportunity because it's two slots. It's not one slot, okay? Maybe if it was one slot, they were like, yeah, Thunder Awaken may take it. But no, they are going to be like playing a LAN event. They are playing for the ego. They are playing for their careers. And I guarantee you that all of the, this game, or well, at least I'm trying to tell you, like, these games are going to be a bluff, but and they are going to be really good to expectate. So please tune in at Chumpix Gaming. We're going to try to cover some uh, some of the games via community cast. You can also follow, uh, go to Wikipedia and you can just look it up who is going to be you know, providing the official broadcast. That's most likely going to be PGL. So I will see you all tomorrow or today, whenever you're watching this at my stream. My name is Chumpix and I hope you're having a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.